Now we are going to see a comparative table between safety one versus safety two made by Professor Hosnagel. The first thing we are going to see is the proper definition of safety according to safety one is as few things as possible go wrong. We want it to have the less number of accidents. Safety two on the other hand, states the definition as many things as possible go right. We are going to look for that everyday work, for that or these positive outcomes. From the perspective of safety management principles, safety one is reactive. We are going to improve safety when something wrong or negative happens. Until we don't have negative outcomes, we are not going to do something. We are basing our future succeed in past things. Safety two, on the other hand, is proactive. It's always trying to anticipate developments and events continuously. That means that we are going to have everybody involved we are going to focus on many frequent everyday activities. From the human factors perspective or human factors in safety management, safety one takes into account the human actions is mainly or takes the human actions mainly as a liability or hazard. So humans are bad. In safety two, on the other hand, again, human ac actions are a resource for the system flexibility and resilience. And here we are going to mention resilience. Resilience is a term that means that a system or person is able to adapt to changing situations. And in any kind of system, we are going to look always for it to be resilient. From the accident investigation perspective, safety one think or states that accidents are caused by failures and malfunctions. So our investigation is going to try to go backwards, try to figure out what happened, what le led us to having that failures or those malfunctions. If we look, go to safety two, we can say that things basically happens in the same way, many times. What we are going to try to see is how usually they work well, rather than why they did went bad ones. But once again, remember, they are not, they are different philosophies, but they are not opposing. We can use both philosophies. Now we are using just safety one, but we want to use both. We want to use safety two to improve safety. And finally, from the risk assessment perspective, in safety one, we can say that accidents are going to be caused by failures and malfunctions. And our investigations, as we said, are going to try to identify those causes and factors that led to the accident. That's not going to be always possible because the systems are more and more complex. complex. They work really well in the past, but as the time passes, systems are going to be more complex and human interactions are going to be more complex. So sometimes everything can go without knowing exactly what happened. In safety too, we have to understand the conditions where performance variability can become difficult or impossible to monitor and control. So here, the risk assessment is going to try to see when it's going to be more difficult to do the task or the everyday work. And then it's when we are going to try to anticipate to those conditions. So here, you can see what Professor Hosnagel defined as safety two versus what 
he started to call safety one or conventional safety.